Hello, my YouTube family. Welcome to another live video. As I'm beginning this video, it is 11, 11 here where I am, which is pretty cool. It's the first time I've seen that. But yeah, this video is a very important message quite possibly one of the most important videos that I have ever made. And it's something that you need to pay close attention to. Maybe watch it back a few times as well. Because this information is going to reveal everything to you. It's going to help you to understand what you've went through and how that happened to you. Many of you who watch my videos, I've noticed that we have something in common. Not all of you, but most of you, especially the clients that I talk to. You see, despite a lot of the things that I've said, and I did actually touch on this in the beginning as well, if you watch my earlier videos, but there is something I need to go deeper into and that is it. And it's really the missing piece. It's something we don't really talk about as being important, but it is very important. And I guess it's because in many ways we've been trained to not think about it and instead to question ourselves as though something is wrong with us. But yeah, this is a very important part of it all. In my earlier videos, of course, I wanted to introduce myself to everyone, explain my background, where I'm from. And I'm sure many of you, you can relate to it in some ways. And it's one of the main things that really sets you up to being involved with narcissists smear campaigns and gang stalking. So basically, my history, my childhood, I come from an upper middle class background where I was raised in a home with four bedrooms, a swimming pool, we had four cars, a Nissan, two Mercedes and one BMW. They were all brand new. And that's just the environment I was raised in. I went to private school my entire life. My entire life, I was pretty much just in a world of my own, in a bubble separated from the rest of the world, from most people. I never got involved with them. I never even knew that this world existed. I was in a world full of unicorns and rainbows, where at home everything was taken care of for me. I could just jump in the pool whenever we wanted to. And I know that's kind of normal these days to have a swimming pool, but I'm talking about over 30 years ago and everything was just normal. We drive around in brand new cars. It was just, we didn't see it as anything out of the ordinary, or at least I didn't, because I was born into that environment. And to go into private school, to me, it was just boring. I didn't think it was anything special. I guess my ideas of myself, based on what I experienced with other people, on the rare occasions who weren't in private school, I felt like I was an outcast. From the very beginning, I felt like I was weird or I was like growing up too fast. I wasn't a child like everyone else. Like I was sheltered, like I was too soft. 
And that's really it. I mean, even though not all of you may be from an upper middle, mid, upper middle class background, you could be from working class, but even then, maybe you were raised in a sheltered environment. You were kept away from most people. You were raised in a bubble. But maybe you just go to school. You spend most of your time by yourself. You don't have too many friends. And then you go back home. You just do your homework. Just watch TV, play video games all night. Then you go to sleep. You're not around most people. You're not out on the streets like everyone else, drinking alcohol, doing drugs. As early as when they're teenagers, they're already getting into that. You weren't involved in all that stuff. So you grow up to become quite soft. I would say quite innocent because you've been protected from things that are corrupt. You haven't been contaminated, so that's become your personality then. And then you may wonder, how does your family turn against you? Your parents aren't like you. Because while you may have been raised in a sheltered environment, and you may be from a upper middle class background, that doesn't mean that your parents were. That doesn't mean that that's their identity because they may have been raised in poverty. And when you're in poverty, you've got all of these difficulties, not just financial, but everything else as well. Because for those people, they're always in survival mode. They haven't got everything figured out for themselves and for their lives. So they're just constantly figuring out how they can survive from one day to the next. They haven't got any time to think about love, connection, a relationship. And they can't think about that because their childhood would need to have been stable first. In childhood, you need to have things figured out. You need to be sheltered in some ways so that you're not just thinking about how do I survive? How do I get from this day to the next? And then you can think about having empathy for other people, which means you can connect. You can experience love, intimacy, a connection. So that's a very important point to make. People who are raised in a low class environment where their needs weren't met, where they struggled financially they didn't have enough to eat. Later in life, these people aren't going to be able to experience love or, con or connection. They're just going to overlook you. They're not gonna think of you in that way. They're not gonna take you seriously. They're just gonna be thinking about, can you help me to survive or not? Can I get what I need from you? That's the only thing that's gonna be on their minds. It's like an animal because they've been raised in the wild we haven't, we were sheltered. And I know many of you who are watching this can relate because you got involved with narcissists, smear campaigns. They target sheltered people because it's very easy for them to manipulate us. We don't know much about the world. We don't know about other people's nature based on how they were raised. So it's easy pickings for them. They see us and it's like a walk in the park. Because you haven't been in the wrestling ring your entire life. You haven't been rolling around in the mud. You were kept safe, you were protected. You were loved, you were cherished. Even if that was fake, you thought it was real when you were a child. You thought your parents cared about you and loved you. Even though maybe it was just about their image. This is a real problem when you get out into the world. I mean, when you come from a middle, uh, an upper middle class background, and like for myself, 
You're from quite a wealthy, affluent family. You're raised in a sheltered environment. I mean, as I said, I went to private school my entire life. I had speech lessons from a very young age. I even remember having um, talks with therapists as well when I was a child, just to check on me to see that I'm okay, that everything's going well. So there was a lot of external support, not really from my family directly, because of course with narcissistic people, they do, they might provide financially and take care of their children in that way to support their image, but not emotional support. But I did have that met as well because we lived next door to a church minister for pretty much throughout my, the early years of my life until I was an adult. So all of these things, I mean, wealthy families, especially narcissists, they want their child to be raised to be perfect, to be this ideal image, to be highly attractive, highly desirable to everyone. They want it to be so that you're well presented, you conduct yourself well around other people, you speak well, you express yourself well, you're disciplined, hardworking, self-motivated, they instill all of these traits into us. Thanks for the donation. Thank the Lord. I appreciate it. Yeah, they instill all of this into it, into us. But not only that, because they're narcissistic, our families, they also want to keep us down and control us. So then it ends up making us quite soft. So you just think you've got all of these qualities and you were raised very well, but then at the same time, you're soft. I mean, it's it just makes it easy pickings for these predators, these narcissists, when you go out into the world. And especially you think, since because you're so used to having everything there for you when you need it. When you're raised around narcissists and it's all about their false image. And not only that, but even your family's friends, they're likely to be the same way as well with their children. And they treat you in a similar way, like you're their own child. So you're well looked after. Which is great while you're sheltered, while you're in this little bubble. But what happens when you go out into the real world where... People are struggling, everyone's suffering. They're just trying to survive from one day to the next. They're not gonna know how to treat you. They're really not. I mean, you have to think about it like this. The environment that you were raised in is like not even 1% of the population. I'm thinking about it like this. What do you think you would, what do you think would happen if you gave, just as an example, a Ferrari to just anyone, a random person out of 99% of the population, what do you think it would look like if you gave that to them and then you returned to them even after a few weeks, maybe a few months in some cases, they wouldn't know how to take care of it. They wouldn't know how to treat it well. It's the same thing as just giving a $100 bill to a two-year-old child. They're not going to know what to do with that. And this is how it is when you go out into the world from a sheltered environment where you've been taken care of, you've been looked after, given the correct treatment in some ways, in other ways, maybe not, which is then how you end up around these people because 
that seems normal to you as well, where you were abused in some ways and your emotional needs were neglected. So then you go out into the world and you experience that type of environment. And it's like, I mean, at some point, I just got to say, I mean, what do we expect? <laughs> Like seriously, what, what do we expect? And we're wrong. We have to take responsibility in some ways when we go out into the world. You know, you're from like uh, an upper middle class background or even working class, but you're in a sheltered environment. You're treated well, you're given love. And then you go out into the world. <laughs> but of course, they're not going to know how to treat you. <laughs> They're not going to know how to love you. How to respect you. They're not going to know how to take care of you. You may know how to take care of them. Because you were raised that way. You, you know how to be polite, respectful, considerate. You know how to present yourself well. To communicate. You know how to get your point across. This is why when you get around a lot of people, they just use these tactics. They pretend like they can't hear what you're saying. They give you word salad. They gaslight you. They just change the conversation. Because they know how you've been raised. They, they can see that. They can, they can see the way you talk, the way you walk, all of these things. As a narcissist pointed out to me before on the first meeting. <laughs> They can see all of these things because they've been raised in hunger, in poverty, in low class environments. They get around you, it's like a breath of fresh air. It really is. But then they don't know how to treat you. Again, they just, their personality is just survival. That's what they were raised in. Then their personality became fixed. It's all about just getting their needs met. All they can do is think about themselves. They can't consider you or anyone else. And yet you're getting around them and you're thinking about, how do I make this person feel comfortable? How do I take care of them? And they're not thinking that way about you. So who do you think is gonna be left with the short end of the stick? Of course it's gonna be you, of course. You're going to be the fool because of how you were raised and how they were raised. And when you come together, they know this environment all too well. They're rough and ready. They've already been through it. They're used to it. This is how they live every day. It's how they've always lived. For you, you're not used to it. You were brought up differently. So of course it's going to be different to you. Are they going to see that and instantly they know they've got the advantage. They've got the upper hand. Because it's like you're walking into the wrestling ring and you've never been into it before. You haven't had any training. You don't even know how to put on your gloves. And it's like they're standing there, they're all ready. They're warming up, ready to take you down. <laughs> because you're just not used to it. You're not familiar with that. Many of you, you are, compared to them, compared to other people, you are rather pretentious, rather conceited. Raised in a sheltered environment, away from the cold, hard world. You weren't brought up in that, you were kept away from it. So you're quite soft, and I, I see it in myself as well. I was very soft until I got out into the world and I had some experience. But even still, at my core, in my heart, I'm still 
quite a soft person. I can only be rough when I need to be. And even then, that's only just to protect myself because I know what other people are like. I instinctually know now, now that I've gone out into the world and I've had this experience. And that's what we really need is that experience, I guess. Well, minimizing our losses as much as we can. We need to experience it. It's just a shame that it has to be in the way that it is. And that we weren't exposed to it a little bit at a younger, younger age. Many of you, you just don't know what the world is like. That's really what it is. You were raised in a bubble your entire life. Do you think, oh, it's just sunshine, unicorn and rainbows. It's like a fairy tale, everything's so pleasant. Everything's so safe. It's not. It was like that for you, yeah. <laughs> it was like that for you in your, your upbringing. <laughs> but you were taken care of. You were given the love, the respect that you deserve. And then you get out into the world and you meet these people and you think there's something wrong with them. That's how you're looking at it. And then you get caught up in smear campaigns, gang stalking. You're thinking, God, look at all these crazy people. What, what's going on? Because your entire life, you're, you're upbringing. You're around your family, your family's friends. They were all kind of the same way, professional people. They don't get caught up in that kind of stuff. They don't hang around those types of people. They work hard, they're disciplined. They take good care of themselves. And then you go out into the world and it's like, maybe you don't realize it initially, but most people aren't like that. Most people are very rough. They're ready to fight for what they want. They have a scarcity mindset. You were raised in an environment of abundance. I'm not saying it was perfect. I mean, yeah, you may have been neglected in some ways as well, emotionally. You may have been abused. There may have been violence. But as for just your needs, and this is the most important thing about it all. For where other people were raised in poverty, this is extremely important for a child. It really is. Because how can you think about having empathy for other people? How can you think about connection? Things like respect, love, compassion. How can you think about any of that when you don't even know when you're gonna have your next meal? Or when your parents are worried, complaining about the rent? How can you think about any of that? That's how it is for them. For most people in the world, that's what it's like. And then that becomes their personality. They're constantly in survival mode. They can't think about anything else. They can't think about love, connection, respect, empathy, compassion. They can't think about any of that. They're just constantly in a fight for their lives. And your entire life, you weren't fighting. You experienced abundance. You were more focused on taking care of other people. Thanks for the donation, Gab Fai Giddy. Appreciate it. So yeah, you get out into this world. Many of you, you didn't even see it. You didn't even realize how different you are to most people. Being sheltered. You were kept pure, uncontaminated. But if you're kept that way, where you're sheltered, to a certain age, I'm not sure what age it is. 
it could be different for, for different people. But if, it, if it's to that certain age, you remain that way for the rest of your life. At your core, you may try to develop a, like a defense against these toxic, corrupt people, but at your core, you're still there. This uncontaminated, pure, innocent, often naive, loving, caring and compassionate person, you're still there. Because you were sheltered all of those years. And that's how narcissists get around you. They, they get you so easily. They trick you, they scam you, and you don't even see it coming. That's how they manage to do it, because their core is very different to yours. Theirs is contaminated, impure, corrupt, evil, immoral. They've been that way since a child. When they were children, they were already thinking about stealing, shoplifting. Going to, going to people's houses, maybe their own relatives, and thinking, wow, that, that looks valuable. Slip that into my, into my pocket, into my bag. <laughs> That's their mindset. And, <laughs> you know, this is how we are. Like, we, we think about these kinds of things, and it just makes us laugh. It's like a joke. It's like, why do you have to do that? But this is how it is for them. They're always in survival mode. They're constantly just trying to survive. And they see people like us and it's like taking candy from a baby. It's like easy pickings. Because it's like they intuitively know at some level. Oh yeah, this, this person doesn't know what they're doing. They don't even see who I am. They can't even see who, they can't even see me. It's like, because You've been raised in a sheltered environment. You haven't been exposed to predators, to corruption, to scarcity. You haven't been in that fight in the wrestling ring. You haven't been rolling around in the mud. So you don't even realize that they're gonna pull you into that. You're not even gonna see it because you'd had to have experienced it before. But what you have experienced is you were taken care of in some ways. In ways where it's like, as a child, like you could have the things that you wanted. I remember I'd go to the supermarket with my mum and you could just pick out whatever you like. Even though all that time ago, where well, the world was much poorer, 30 years ago. It's a difference. And you may not see it as much, it may seem normal to you. It doesn't seem normal to them. Their normal is very different to yours. And yet, because it seems normal to you, when you go out into the world and you meet other people, it's like everything's so frustrating. It's like you constantly have to manage your expectations, lower your standards of the behavior that you accept, or that you would normally accept or expect. And you're just thinking, why is it so difficult for them? Why is it so hard? Why can't they just get it together? how you're seeing it and it frustrates you to the point where you then find these videos and it's because their childhood their upbringing was not like yours you were raised a certain way it built a certain character for, for you to where you could just do everything with ease i'm not saying it doesn't take work yeah you have to work hard you have to sweat but you can get it done. You don't fail. Or if you do fail, get it done right the next time, you learn from it. They just keep messing up again and again. 
and yet they manage to get you think that it's get you to think that it's you that you're not right when it's like hold on a minute if you want to know just look back at the person's childhood their upbringing that tells you what you need to know because I look at myself and I was in private school my entire life. I mean, from the age of five years old up until I was 16, I was in private school. I had speech lessons as a child. And yeah, that alone it creates a character for you, your personality. You're sheltered from all of this nonsense going on outside. All of this dysfunction where people are fighting, there's all of this chaos. There's poverty, there's hunger. Dysfunctional families. You're sheltered from all of that where other kids, they're all getting into it at a very young age, you're not. So you're already prepared from the very beginning. You're already raised, especially if you weren't drawn into your family's dysfunction when they were fighting. I know myself, I was always running away from all of that. I would just go outside for a walk, a walk around in the forest behind our house. I would go to the beach. I just want to get away from it whenever they started fighting. When my mother was raging, I would go to my dad. And then he would like love bore me in. And then when my dad would start raging, I would go back to my mum. So I always avoided it. I always ran away from it. The fights, anything toxic. And that's what I've been doing my entire life, running away from toxic people. I run away from it. And I'm sure many of you do too, once you realize what you're dealing with. But yeah, from a young age, I was raised to be this way, to be confident to be able to present myself well, to converse effectively. This is how I so easily amount so many subscribers, viewers, who can relate to what I say, because I, I was raised to be this way from a very young age. And to be logical and rational rather than emotional, like a lot of people in this world today who didn't have the tools, they didn't have the proper upbringing, the schooling, the education. Quite clearly, many, many of you did. Even though you may not realize it, I mean, just think, you're able to watch this video and listen to what I'm saying. You resonate with it. So it's you as well. And that's how you're experiencing these things with narcissists and toxic people. And that's how you get so caught up in it because it's like, you're so confident in how you present yourself and how you speak. And if someone doesn't understand, you just automatically assume, okay, it must be me. So I need to try and figure things out. I need to be better for you. But it's like, no matter how good you are, it's never good enough. Because you're dealing with people who are constantly in survival mode and they're gonna be in survival mode until the day they die. It doesn't matter if they suddenly become successful, they suddenly develop a business, become a millionaire, whatever it is, they're still going to be in that survival mode at their core. Because that's the environment that they were raised in. 
Well, as for us, our environment was more comfortable. We had our needs met. We were financially secure. So we conflict. We're not compatible with these types of people, which is like 99% of the world. It's like how the psychologist Ross Rosenberg said in one of his videos, Never wrestle with pigs. You might get dirty and besides the pig likes it. They love to pull someone like you into the mud, into the wrestling ring and get you dirty. Because normally you're clean, you're pure, you're uncontaminated. They pull you into it, they love it. They just mock and ridicule you, have a laugh at you because deep down they know you're better. You were raised better than that. They know it. And they know that they're foul, they're corrupt, they're no good. So they love to pull you into it because then it's like, oh, so you're not so special after all. We're not so different. Because if we were different, then how come you're, you're laying in the mud right now? Or you're in the wrestling, with, wrestling ring with me? I could just hit you. You've got a bruise in your face. So you're no different, you're no better. That's how they think. That's exactly how they think. That's the process that goes on in their mind. When they come after you, when they attack you, and it doesn't always have to be physically, even when it's emotionally, psychologically. And they, they just manage to get you because you're sheltered. You were sheltered as a child. You're quite soft. You're more willing to agree. You're more adaptive, more flexible, rather than maladaptive like them. So all they have to do is just, you know, they know all the tactics. They know what they have to do to get you to agree, to act in accordance with them. And then it's like, yeah, I got you. Bruised you emotionally, psychologically. Then it tells them, oh, you're no different to me. So you're not better, you're not greater after all. And that's what they're looking for. That's the reaction, the response that they want. Even though it's not real. Remember, they have to use this false character, bring you in, into their false reality. Because our world is the true world. It doesn't matter that we're such a small percentage of the population. We were sheltered from all of this nonsense. We are the ones who are real. And that's why they've got to pull us into their world. We're not trying to pull them into our world. They're trying to draw us into it so that they can get what they need from us. Because we had the tools a long time ago to be successful, to build a fulfilling life for ourselves and other people. But they didn't. And that's really what draws them to us. It's these qualities. Because remember, people want what they don't have. They come around us because they want these qualities that we got from being raised in a, a more functional, <clears throat> maybe a more developed, uh, a more sheltered upbringing. They kind of like that in a way because in their childhood, they were more focused on survival. On how to survive from one day to the next, while for us, because those needs were met, we could focus more on love, connection. <clears throat> I mean, I remember when I was a child in school, I had all of these crushes on the girls and sometimes I would have dreams about them because I could. You know, I wasn't having nightmares like thinking, oh God, you know, what, what am I gonna have to eat? 
oh, how is my mum going to pay the rent? I, I didn't have to worry about those things. That was never a concern to me. I never had to worry about money or anything like that as a child. I never even had to worry about getting a job, nothing. Never had to think about that. And I know that's the same for many of you. Those needs were taken care of. Because then that developed into your personality, to where you became quite soft, you're not so hard like they are. Then they come around you, it's easy pickings because they've already been through all of the battles in their lives. They've already got all of the scars. They've been through it. And then they come around you. They're, they're the predator. You're the prey. <laughs> Big Dog Red says, try growing up with the projects. <clears throat> That's the thing as well. You get into the projects, into the hoods. It doesn't mean that every single person there is like that. They're not all thugs, they're not all gangsters. You always come across these needles in the haystacks, these rare few people. who are probably just in their home all day, they never go out. They keep to themselves, they avoid the thugs. So even in those environments, and somehow they manage to get by, so you will have those rare few as well. It's not all about being rich and, you know, I know I talk about my life and I'm, I'm, I was from a, uh, an upper middle class background. I mean, we didn't have financial worries. You know, as I said, it was a four bedroom house, swimming pool that I was raised in. And four cars, two Mercedes, a BMW, a Nissan. And then went up to be in in a five bedroom mansion, five bathrooms with four floors, two brand new Aston Martins, AMG Mercedes. You know, we didn't have any worries like that at all. But it's not always that a person needs to have that affluent background. Although if you do, then the more likely it is that you become a target, you will be smeared, your name will be smeared, you will be gang stalked, all of these things, they will want to destroy you. And you've got to look at it like that. I mean, everything that they're trying to do to you is not already who and what you are. Everything they're trying to do to you is not already who and what you are. And that is like the missing piece to the puzzle. That's what solves it all. And it keeps you from being gaslit from being manipulated because it's like, why are you trying to do this to me? If I'm not already that, if I'm not already that way. So when they're trying to pull you into it, into the toxic environments, the fights, the arguments, the corruption, the problems, it's because you're not already that way. Like when they devalue you, they're taking value away from you. It doesn't mean you don't have value. It means that you do. That's why they're taking value away. And then when they go to discard you, they treat you like you're garbage. It's because, yeah, you become garbage. Once you get involved with them, then you lose all of your value. So this is it. This is everything that they do. They're trying to make you into the opposite of your not because they look at you. And I'm not saying this is what we are. I mean, of course, no one's perfect, but they literally, they idealize you. They view you as perfect when they see you. I've heard about it from narcissists many times before when they love bomb me, they idealize me in the beginning, the way they talk about me. They literally look at you like an angel. And then later on, they act like they're like that. Everything they're trying to display to you, they're trying to be like you. They're trying to compete with you because 
honestly, the way that they see you, the way they look at you. If you could see yourself from their eyes in the beginning when they love bomb you before they take your value away. Before they try to corrupt you. They really view you as a very special person. Even though they have to be in denial, they can't really admit it to themselves. But that's really how it is. But the problem is they don't know how to treat you with the love, compassion and respect that you can give to them from how you were raised so you know how to be that way. But with them, they don't. Like I said, it's like giving a Ferrari to pretty much just anyone from the 99% of the population. You really think they'd know what to do with that? You think they would know how to take care of it? And they come around you and they, they project that onto you, but that's really them. Just look at people's lives. Just look at how they're living. Do they take good care of themselves? Most people don't. You really think they're going to know how to take care of you? Of course not. Of course not. It's like giving a hundred dollar bill to a two year old child. They're just going to tear it up. They're not going to know what to do with it. They're not going to save it. They're not going to invest it. They're just going to go and blow it all. And this is just how it is in the world today. There's a lot of people in this world, they want to have power. They were never meant to have it. They were never meant to have it. Power should be given to those who are pure. Those who are not corrupt. Those who were raised in more of a sheltered upbringing. but also those who can appreciate it, those who don't just take it for granted. So that's important as well. Sadly, power these days is given to some of the most immoral, corrupt people. And yet then we look around and we wonder why the world is the way that it is today. This is just how it is. And many of it, I know it frustrates you, it confuses you. <laughs> when you go out into the world around most people. And it's like, the first thing you should notice is how they love bomb you, they manipulate you. They try to reflect your own qualities and virtues back to you. They're always trying to get you to agree. They're always trying to get you to act in accordance with them. Why? Because they want to feel like there's no difference between you and them as though you're the same. They want to feel like they're like you. And that's how it's like the analogy I mentioned earlier. They want to pull you into that wrestling ring, into the mud. They get you dirty. You've got mud all over you. Or they hit you. Then you've got a bruise in your face. And then to them, then that tells them there's no difference between you and them. So that's really what that is when they do that. Well, as for us, it's the opposite because of how we were raised. It's like, we don't want to see anyone hurt. We don't want to see anyone down. We want the best for everyone. And that's part of the problem as well. Because you're getting around people, you're wanting the best for them. You're wanting to give them this amazing relationship, this amazing connection. You want to share a home with them, build a future. And you're trying to do that with people who were raised in the opposite environment of what you were. They're constantly in survival mode. They're just trying to survive from one day to the next. And you're coming around thinking about love, connection, a relationship. At some point, we got to think, is that going to work out well? 
someone who didn't have to worry about surviving. Things were already fine for them in their childhood. Their needs were met. Getting around someone who had the opposite experience, they were just thinking about how to survive. You put those two people together, what do you think's gonna happen? Of course, they're gonna eat you alive. They're gonna tear you down, just use you for whatever you've got, just so that they can then survive. I mean, just think about that, it's just obvious. And yet we don't see it, because we don't realize who we are. But that's just how it is, it's like throwing a piece of meat to a pack of dogs, they're just gonna tear you apart. They're gonna tear you to pieces. They really are. Just like they did to Jesus. Jesus was not meant to be around those types of people. This is just how it is. We're not meant to be around most people. We're not. I mean, there's a reason why in the projects and the hoods, you're not going to see a wealthy, wealthy, affluent son or daughter in that type of environment. I mean, what do you think is going to happen to them? How do you think people are going to treat them? You think people are going to be like, oh, yeah, all right, let's roll, roll out the red carpet for them. Make sure they got everything they need. No. Instead, they're going to be looking at everything you've got. And they're going to be plotting and scheming of how they're going to steal that from you. And then you're going to be the one who's left without anything. And it's like all you've really got is your qualities. And then they're the ones who are going to have this false image pretending to be you. Because, yeah, they, they wish they were you. I mean, it all goes back to the childhood. They all wish that they had that love, that special care, that special attention when they were a child. And that's why they spend the rest of their lives trying to have that, trying to look like they live a comfortable life, trying to look like they're well taken care of. Even though it's all fake, even though they may be corrupt and they just cheated people, they stole, It's a trauma response. Well, as for us, what's our trauma response? Trying to take care of everyone else the best that we can, and neglecting ourselves. Because that was our experience in childhood. We had a lot, and we could see that other people did not. So we're going out into the world thinking, oh, baby, how can I love you? How can I take care of you? Let me just hold you and give you the love that you need. Let me give you everything. Let me give you the world. Based on our trauma response in childhood, where it's like we had everything we needed. Our needs were taken care of. We looked out into the world. We could see it's not like that for everyone else. And yet they had the opposite upbringing. This is how you know straight away. Because they come around you and it's like they know that they're nothing like us. It's all about how do I cheat this person? How do I get it out of him or her? And then I can present this image as though that's who I am. Because this is what people want. You know, when you go for a job or wherever it may be, you're going into a partnership for a business. A lot of people, they do want someone like that. Someone who was raised in that type of environment. It's highly attractive, it's highly desirable. People don't want to be around those who are just from the hood. Unless they're like that, then they, yeah, they might feel more comfortable around those types of people. But sociopaths, psychopaths, they want to be around more high class people. They do because they aspire to be more like that. But as for the lower end, of the spectrum and narcissists, they're more just looking around uh, 
you know, get around those types of people just to cheat them, to steal, and then to go back to the hole where they belong. And this is why you can't be around most people. Because they didn't have the same upbringing that you did. Sometimes I wish it wasn't this way. I mean, I was with a narcissist before and she tried to explain to me how, you know, this is how it is. This is the way the world works. I didn't want to accept it at the time. The more you look into it, this is actually how it is. If you had a good upbringing, you went to private school, you need to be around other people like that. Sadly for me, my, my father was telling me this my entire life. I didn't listen. I was just like, no, no, I want to go out into on the streets, see what everyone else is like, the people who are poor, they don't have much money, they haven't got a good family who's there to protect them. I wanted to be around those people. And now I know, now I realize why. Because they had qualities that I was missing. I was so soft, I wasn't streetwise, I wasn't rough and ready like they were. I didn't know how to fend for myself. And so I, I wanted to, I was curious about it. I wanted to, ex wanted to explore what was that like, to be like them. And of course, I went about it in the wrong way. I should have listened to my father back then because you come in from that type of upbringing, you get around these leeches, these parasites, they're gonna suck the life out of you. They're gonna leave you to rot. Seriously, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna eat you alive. Like throwing a piece of meat to a pack of dogs. If they haven't already, they're gonna just destroy you. They will. I mean, that's the whole point. That's why you were raised in a sheltered environment. That's the whole point of it, to protect you from that. That's why you don't see the rich upper class people just going about in the projects in the hoods, getting around just common people, getting on the bus, taking the train, the tube, that's why you don't see that. Because they already know exactly what's gonna happen to them. They know these people are gonna tear them apart. They're gonna destroy them, their life. It's gonna be over, it's gonna be ruined. That's why they don't invite those types of people into their home, because they already know. They're gonna walk in with their dirty shoes all over their expensive carpet. They're gonna steal their stuff. Maybe they, I don't know, they got some expensive paintings. When they're not looking, all of that's going to go missing. It's going to be gone. And they might just go and spread rumors about them, discredit them, just try to ruin their life. Because they're just jealous. They're jealous, they're extremely envious. Remember that these types of people are very competitive because they're in survival mode. They're trying to compete with you. And it's sad the way the world is. But this is just how it is. People like us, we cannot be around most people. We have to have these boundaries. We have to create this divide. But not all of them, I mean, you know, there's always the exceptions. People who recognize this truth. People who recognize that, yes, if you're raised in a sheltered upbringing, a certain level of social class, that other people are gonna be able to get you, they are gonna be there to try and destroy you, to steal from you. People from a lower class a working class who can see that truth and they accept it. And yes, I have met people like that as well. Those types of people, they didn't try to discredit me. 
They didn't try to sabotage my life. And if anything, they accepted it. They were like, yeah, it's right. You, you are from a higher class. You are from a sheltered upbringing. I'm not. They were able to accept that. And we still got along well. And we got along well because they weren't in denial. They didn't have a false self. They didn't need to pull me into a false reality just so they could feel comfortable. And the reason why is because those people are self-motivated. They still believe in themselves. So they're not completely corrupt, even though they may be from a working class background. So that's another thing to consider as well. You can still have friends like that and they may have qualities that you aspire to have for yourself and that's good as well because we should learn from each other just don't do that around most people they will seek to destroy you they will leech off you like a parasite they will steal from you they will do anything to try to ruin your life to discredit you to make you into the every into everything that you're not pull you into their wrestling ring, get you dirty, just like them. They will try to do all of that. Because they just can't accept reality. They can't accept that they're them and you're you. It's just not fair to them. They don't like it. They just look at it like, how is that fair? How is that fair that you were sheltered, you were raised in a, a comfortable environment, you had everything you needed, and as for them, all of those years, while you were cushy and comfortable in your home, everything was laid out for you on a plate. They suffered all of our time, they struggled. So then they see you, and then they've got this entitlement. Then it's like, all right, now it's time for you to pay. It's time for you to make it equal after everything that they had to go through. So what it is really, they just don't want to accept reality. They don't want to accept that you are who you actually are and that they are who they are. They don't want to accept that they're dirty, foul, corrupt, immoral people. They just don't want to accept it. And that's a big part of the problem is that denial. Because I put myself in their shoes. I can have empathy for them, compassion. It's just obvious what I would do if I was in their shoes. I would just accept it. I would be like, okay, yeah. I'm foul, I'm immoral, I'm corrupt. So what do I have to do to be pure? But then that's the problem as well, because it's like they kind of need to get around people who are pure, who are innocent to be that way. And once we're awake and aware, we don't want them around us because all they're going to do is corrupt us again. So we want to keep them away. As I said, I mean, there's always these exceptions. There's these people who, yeah, they may have had a difficult upbringing. They may have um, struggled in their childhood, as a lot of people do. But as for these rare few exceptions, they had something special. They were self-motivated. They had this belief in themselves that they knew that no matter what, they were going to do it. They were going to make it. They, were, they knew they were going to make it happen for themselves. And that's great. But doing it the right way as well, not by cheating people. And I think a lot of times what they have is uh, faith in God. 
I think that's really what pulls them through. Because I don't believe that people can really do these things if they, if they do actually believe in God. But yeah, this is just how it is. For many of you, you just can't be yourself around most people. They don't want you to be you. They don't want to accept that that is you. They want you to be something else. That's why they want to pull you into the wrestling ring, into the mud. They want to get you dirty, caught up in all kinds of stuff that you should never have been involved in. That's why they want to get you caught up in that. They want to ruin you, destroy you, make you just like them. Just so they can feel comfortable and to kind of numb their envy and jealousy of you a little bit. Because they know they're not like you. They're never going to be like you. They're never going to be pure. They're always going to be these corrupt people. They're always going to be that way. And why? Because they don't want to accept it. They want to remain in denial. So this is what you have to understand about most people in this world. They are dysfunctional, they are corrupt, they're immoral, they're impure. But you get around them and they will contaminate you. And this is why they wanna be close to you. And it's why you should distance yourself from them. It's good for them to be around you. They can steal your qualities, mimic you. It's easy pickings for them, but for you, it's no good. Obviously, all that can happen is that you're going to lose around them and they're going to gain. Even if it's just your attention, your validation, of course they want that. Of course they want that from you. I mean, someone who's raised in a sheltered environment, you've got the purity, like a real person. Good natured. It's just all around better, you're of a higher class. But you need to be around people like that as well, stop giving people all of these chances. Start looking for other people like yourself. People of a higher class, a higher caliber, higher value people. People who went to private school. People who take good care of themselves. People who are trying to do something with their lives. You need to be around people like that. Not people who are just going to get you dirty. They're going to pull you into the mud. You've got to stay around, stay away from those types of people. You do not belong with them. It's so much better than that. And they know that. That's why they've got to pull you into it. To make you like them so that they can feel more comfortable around you. You've got to start looking at yourself, reminding yourself of who you are. Celebrating yourself. Celebrate where you came from. Celebrate your background. Stop feeling bad about it. Just because they're jealous, just because they don't like it, just because their upbringing was not like yours. That's not your fault. Love yourself. And that includes everything. Your childhood. Everything that you experienced. Yes, they may be jealous, insecure. They want to try and make you just like them. Celebrate your purity. 
Every time that they try to take it away from you, celebrate it. Love you. Stop choosing other people over yourself. Again, I'd just like to say thank you to those of you who donated. As you know, I have been the target of many smear campaigns and gang stalking. So my life is very different to how it used to be and how it should be. But I'm still that same person inside at my core. I'm still that same person in the environment that I was raised in. And I'm always going to be that guy. And that's just it as well. Sometimes it may not look that way on the outside. In our external circumstances. Because a lot of people want to be us. They really do. They, and they're going to be seeking that for the rest of their lives. That environment they never had in their childhood. Or we just see it as normal. It's not such a big deal to us. Because that's already who we are inside. We're not trying to compensate for it on the outside. But yeah, that's just how it is. Thank you for the donations. I appreciate it. You can also donate to my PayPal as well. It's paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. Give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, if it resonated with you. Let me know what you think about the video in the comment section. I read your comments every day. Hit subscribe and click all notifications to be notified when I upload a new video. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. And you can follow me on Instagram. It's Narc Survivor YouTube. Thank you all for joining me on another live video. I appreciate all of you. And I look forward to speaking with you in another live video very soon.